Dr. Roberts, thank you so much for saying yes to this. Why you? Why now? Why this age? Great to be with, great to be with you. You know, I'm running for president of the United States because I believe that America needs God. And uh, we have gotten away from that and it has hurt our country and by extension every other nation on earth uh, that we where we should have been leading uh, we have been failing. And so I want to do right by the people of America, our citizens, and then do right by other nations and the people of the world. On your website, you reference America 2.0, 2.0, one nation under God. What exactly do you mean by that? Is America under many gods like other many nations oh, right now? Or what is real? What's that all about? We, we are not one nation under God. We are a divided nation uh, and godless. And so America 2.0 is looking forward to a 22nd century America. What should America look like? What kind of scientific advancements? What kind of technological advancements should we be leapfrogging from today to lead the world and to continue the greatness in the 22nd century? Many of the problems with American politicians is they only look for the next election cycle. And I'm trying to look for the next, for generations down the road, not just four years from now or eight years from now, but the policies and what kind of an America, what kind of a world will my son and my grandchildren live in? I'm just thinking, why is that a big deal for you? I mean, we have seen some men before you we're always proclaiming and putting God ahead of everything and saying, I mean, even the nation is a nation that says in God, we trust a rich God. I can tell you that uh, it may be on our currency and our money, but it is not how America lives. And our culture does not align with what we espouse our values to be. We are not one nation under God. We are a divided people. We are divided by color. We're divided by race. We're divided by economic class. We're divided by popularity. We're divided by what our job descriptions or our job titles are. Uh, we're divided by our sex, our gender, our orientations. They divide us by everything imaginable. Even people of faith are completely divided. And what I'm trying to do as President of the United States will be to unite America, unite Americans, and the highest banner that we can all unite under. If we disagree about everything, every policy, the path forward, we can disagree about all of it, but we can unite under the fact that America needs God. And the fact that there's been politicians before me that talked about God, there's a vast difference in our platform. Because to me, most of the politicians sound like used car salesmen. Like I should go to buy a car and they find out that I'm a believer. And so they start saying, oh, well, I go to church or I believe in God. And I know that it has nothing to do with what I'm doing. They're just trying to get a sale. Well, that's the way I feel when most politicians talk about God. I can tell they're pandering to me because they don't talk like the people that I go to church with every week. They don't talk like people of faith that have a yes. close personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So I can hear that if miles go. And I'm not running on the fact that I am a Christian. I'm running on who I am. I am running on what America needs. And that's the distinction. One puts the spotlight on me. And I want the spotlight on him. Because you can have the best policy in the world. I could have the best cabinet in the world, the best secretaries and the best ministers of finance and economy that you can imagine. And all of the great policy will fail if we do not acknowledge God in America once again. We need his blessing and he has promised blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So my policy, as robust as it is, and I know that it is the best for economy, national security, family, education, science, technology, it improves everyone's life regardless of the identity politics that divides us. And in our prosperity and in our acknowledgement of God, once again, I believe America will be united. I'm excited to hear that. And we really pray for America to be united. But here's the thing, you have seen a spate of legislative change taken in several African countries. 
where same-sex marriages were thrown as something that is opposing to African norms and beliefs. What is your stand on this? Are you for these nations or are you against these nations? Will your administration punish these nations for believing in what they believe? Will they be punished? Uh, will they even have access to their grants or financial support? Mm. Will you be chopping them off just because of what? Look, we speak about democracy and the country in question is Uganda. If the parliament the votes that this is how the voice of the people is uh, voiced out, how do you deal with that? How do we come and now say it cannot be? Where do you stand in this? Uganda is just one nation, by the way. Dr. Robert? You're right. Ghana uh, passed legislation a couple of years ago very similar. Uh, I completely agree. Uh, first of all, I can tell you that I believe in the sovereignty of nations. Uh, I can also tell you that under the Roberts administration and my presidency, we would not cut off economic support or investment to African nations that stand for protecting the family unit. Uh, so when they pass legislation that is uh, against the United Nations wishes or the uh, WHO or any of the international bodies, that is none of my concern. I am. It does not matter to me. I believe in the sovereignty of the nations. Now, if there were human rights abuses, that's a different story. If they are committing genocide against their people, that is a different story. But that is not the the question. Specifically, was on same-sex marriage and homosexuality, and uh, and and then nations passing laws against that. I will not cut off or sanction nations just because they have a different culture and a different body of beliefs than uh, some people in the United States or what the international bodies would prefer to see. Uh, I do not believe uh, in, in forcing any value system on a sovereign nation. In fact, it would be similar in the economic space. So for example, if an African country passed a law where 90% of the wages would be taken and collected as taxation, that's essentially a form of slavery because then I'm working for you and not getting paid because you're keeping all of the profits. You're not giving enough for me. Even if you take care of my housing and my welfare and my well-being, uh, you, you have enslaved me. I cannot grow and prosper my family or my business. And so, uh, and, and just as we would not get involved in a situation, that is the, 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 for the people of those sovereign nations to deal with those internal uh, challenges. And the interesting thing is it varies by by generation and it varies by uh, geography. So there are times where different countries tend to go more liberal and then they get more conservative and there's a flow and an ebb to that. And I'm not trying to be the president of the world. I'm running for president of the United States. Ooh, I love that. You are not trying to be the president of the world, but you're running for the president of the United States. And it's important for us to be able to separate this. Now let's talk about Greeks. We know that there's a battle between the Greeks nations and the West that is ranging on right now on the economic scenes. What, what, we have, we have China really taking advantage of this and other nations really. What would be your posture as you run for the office? next year to what I don't blame China Russia India uh, you know South South Africa Brazil I, I don't blame the BRICS nations for trying to fill in the gap for what America has failed to do as the leader of the free world uh, our currency the way it uh, it has we have tried to manipulate markets and the try, way we have manipulated through sanctions and otherwise many countries to achieve our desired ends that uh, sometimes we're not oftentimes we're not noble uh, I understand the need uh, when a, the power, the predominant power, the world power starts to abuse the power that they have, you have to then uh, find other ways around it. It's just like a playground bully, you'd have to find a way around. I want to restore that so that a BRICS is not necessary, so that a, a BRICS currency is not necessary, so that drafted trade agreements are not necessary. 
Uh, that's why I'm running for president, to, so that it makes BRICS irrelevant and useless. Uh, however, if I was not the president of the United States, then I understand why other nations need to protect their interests against an often corrupt regime uh, like what we have had in the United States of America. And so we want to do right by the people and nations of the world, but uh, the currency, like for example, take the Belt and Road Initiative that China has for Africa. That has been a failed policy for Africa and everyone knows it. The African presidents that I speak with, uh, they desperately do not want to have to do business with China, but they need the money or Russia, but they have to have the money. And so they said, what do we do? You come with talk, America comes with talk, they come with money. So I want to get America out of the foreign aid business where we just basically give it to our left hand in Africa and it only lines the pockets of the leaders and it never makes it down to the people who really need the help and support for small business owners and entrepreneurs. And instead, uh, I want to support and promote uh, entrepreneurship and economic free enterprise and development uh, independence for African nations and the people of Africa. And, and so that's why, from a BRICS perspective, the currency, uh, we want to do what is right in, in that sense by them. Oh, we can still hear the cry of George Floyd saying, I can't breathe as his voice was fading away. And that speaks exactly to police brutality. Now, this is not something isolated to America, but what is your stance? What, what policy reforms will be in place to ensure that things like this do not become a norm or we don't get to see them the way we do? Are you for, and this is tricky, are you for defunding the police or what? What are we talking about here? When it comes yeah, to no, it's a great White question. House. It's a great question. And and no, we're not going to defund the police uh, at all. We we are a nation of law and order. And without it, we are a lawless and there would be much more crime and bloodshed without the police. In fact, many of the people who have cried for defunding the police call the police whenever they are assaulted because it is a free for all uh, in, a, in a habeas corpus situation and under martial law. Uh, I will say that uh, the ultimate problem when it comes to police reform is that years ago, U U.S. law enforcement agencies made the shift from police officers being that of serving and protecting the general public. And they started training them as if they were military uh, agents. That profound shift in training and in thinking has led to increased police brutality. Now, I will tell you, it is a problem in every industry, even in preachers. There are pastors and bishops that there's always bad apples in religion and in business and in the workplace and in, in, in science and in technology and in the police and law enforcement and in government. So there's always going to be patterns. And to your point, we cannot let this become the norm that there was clearly a problem with the aggressive uh, tactics used by that police officer and the police force there. But, you know, America has done a lot of things to try to help the police. I know many local communities, uh, the police departments actually play sports with the youth and the people that they are, the communities they're assigned to serve and protect. And so I do see police departments making that effort. However, the ultimate problem to police brutality and of gun violence in America and all of the other systemic uh, problems that we're facing starts with family. It starts in the home. A lot of the race problems that we have in America, uh, it's it comes from the family. It comes from the home. And so we have to fix the character of our nation's families. America has a character problem right now. And part of that is because our leaders have character problems. If we want uh, people will follow the leader in every nation. And so we just reflect our leaders. Everything rises and falls on leadership, I believe. And I think America proves that out in oftentimes ugly ways, but it is the truth. And so I, that's why I can say with confidence that with me as president of the United States, we will have God's blessing on America once again. Lastly, what are you going to do in the White House? How are you going to run the White House? What difference are we going to see there? 
that we're not seeing now, that we have not seen in the past. But how, what are you going to do differently in the White House? And why should anyone vote for you? What, why should Africa even consider, you know, lifting your name anyway? To say this is a man we can call. I him. think Africa, yeah. Africa has a highly vested interest, in my opinion and perspective, to Roland Roberts becoming president of the United States, because I will be the greatest friend to Africa Africa has ever had. Uh, Africa is used to being pillaged by different regimes, whether it's European countries or even uh, the United States, where we have turned our back on many African nations and leaders as this uh, administration has. I'm telling you, uh, I will get out of the foreign aid business where we give it to our left hand over there and it never goes to the people. And instead we will get into the investment business. I believe that Africa is the, the continent of Africa is the last greatest economic frontier in the world. We must be the best partners any African nation uh, could possibly imagine. We need to double, triple, quadruple, 10 X what the China's Belt and Road Initiative was. They built roads that were halfway, that crumble, that fall apart, an infrastructure that cannot be counted on and uh, is just to undermine and to take and steal from the African governments and the people. And America, under my leadership, will do right by the nations of Africa. We will collectively and collaboratively uh, invest and that's one of the ways I'm going to pay off our national debt is by investing in Africa. We're not going to give handouts. We are going to loan the money and then that will help pay off as you are successful. So will the United States of America be. You cannot ignore Africa. 70% of the world's youth will re uh, reside on the African continent by 30, uh, by, by 2030, nearly 20% of the world's population will be on that continent. With a super majority of the world's youth, that means every business in, in the world needs to be in tune with Africa because uh, pop, pop culture is going to depend on what African youth want. Uh, fads, clothing designers will depend on what African youth want. The future will be however African youth are educated, that is the direction of the world. And so we have a vested interest, a financial interest, a national security interest, uh, and yes, even a peaceful unity and unifying interest in helping Africa. Music to my ears, I love it. Africa is the future. Now, lastly, for those who wants to learn more about you, follow you, and get to know what you're doing so that they hear what else you are busy with. How can they find out more about you? Well, I hope you'll, they'll check out our website, rollandroberts.com. It's spelled different, R-O-L-L-A, two L's and no D. Uh, and you can find us on every social network at Roland Roberts, but keep up with us. We're doing things differently. We're not running the normal political campaign. I don't wanna be the normal, typical president. I want to be the president that leaders and people around the world can look to and say, that's the example for every president in the world to follow. That's the kind of man we need leading our country. That's the kind of man who can lead us forward. So thank you, uh, Major Daughter and South Africa and all of my African brothers and sisters uh, for allowing me to share with you today. And I was hoping you'll say something about the NFTs, but maybe next time, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Dr. Roland Roberts, check him out. Do you really want to follow this man? I feel he's a disruptor. I feel he has come to shake some things that have not been shaken in a very long time. But, well, everybody needs to judge for himself. From me to you is well done. Oh.